What's up guys, before we start with today's video and uh, we get into turboing this Civic in either one or two days, I wanna let you guys know we are doing a cash in orders promotion. And by the time you guys see this video, it is gonna be Sunday, it is gonna be our last day. So every uh, purchase on motionontv.com not only gets you entered for a chance to win the Civic, it also gives you cash in your order. So don't go home empty handed, you get some cool merch, you get some cash in your order and you get the chance to win this freaking Civic. Let's get on with the video. Really exciting video for you guys today, and this is something that I've been uh, pretty pumped to actually do for a while, which is a uh, attempt to turbo our 1997 B16 swap Honda Civic EK hatchback in a day. So uh, goal is to try to have this thing running by the end of the day. So we have a, uh, a lot of things kind of uh, ahead of us for today. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to do is kind of go over all of the components and everything that you actually need to basically turbo a vehicle and then also kind of get into the specifics of the Civic. So we'll kind of run around this thing real quick. You guys know we are giving this thing away. Every $1 you guys spend on motionontv.com is an automatic entry for a chance to win this thing, which is really cool. Purchase t-shirts and hats and hoodies and stickers and all that stuff. It gives you the opportunity to win this thing. Take home some cool merch too. So you're not left empty handed. So right here, really, really clean car. Pretty fresh paint on it, painted about six months ago. I just cut and buffed it and did that about two weeks ago. Just painted the engine bay in it last week. And as you can see, it is naturally aspirated right now, has a stock header on it. Uh, we just we got the engine tranny and everything back in here yesterday. Got some fresh axles on it. And uh, basically it is just ready for a turbo. So right here we have all of these components. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of explain this. So this is a vehicle specific intercooler. A lot of times when you do go to turbo a, uh, a vehicle, you know, depending on what it is, they don't necessarily have an intercooler kit for it. But if you do, let's say you have a Civic or a 240SX or, you know, like a C10 or something like CX Racing, a lot of other companies actually make a kit that just kind of bolts on. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive, but you could pretty much just hop on the internet and get some of these universal cores and then a universal piping kit. And if you know how to weld or if you just want to put like 30 couplers on it, which I don't really recommend, but you could make something work. Yeah, so you have to have some sort of an intercooler on there, you know, keep them charge air temps down. Right here we have a uh, turbo manifold. This goes does a T3 and a T4 and a V-band. Right here is a Garrett 3076R Gen 2 turbo T4 82AR exhaust housing, and this thing will flow up to about 750 horse, which is pretty crazy. So one of the things about having a uh, adding a turbocharger to your vehicle is you have to, they're like oil cooled as well as... Um, oil lubricated so you have to have oil flowing to the turbo and then you also have to have the oil basically flow out of the turbo back into um, the oil pan of the vehicle so for that we have uh, this little kit right here basically this bolts on the bottom right here of the turbo um, you have this little basically push lock hose and then this is a, uh, a really cool little design right here basically you just drill a hole in your oil pan this thing has some o-rings in it and uh, basically you tighten that down. We're gonna throw some Loctite on it so you don't actually have to, uh, to weld or do anything. And uh, so this is gonna be the first time trying that. I'll let you guys know if that works or leaks, um, which it shouldn't, but uh, you know, if it does, I'll let you know and, uh, and we'll fix it. We'll just weld the bung on it. But yeah, we have uh, some other little fabrication components here. Have uh, some stuff for an exhaust coming off of the, basically the turbo. We have the V-band, uh, we have the proper clamps, and then we have the bung for the, the wide band. Once you get, you know, once you have your intercooler on there and you have your turbo, you're going to be able to make a, a lot of extra air that goes into engine and you have to be able to tame that, you know, and give that the proper amount of air for the proper amount of fuel as well as control your timing because, you know, as you add, you know, all the extra air into the, the combustion chamber, cylinder pressures and everything rise, uh, basically things start happening a lot faster. So you have to reduce the timing so that you don't end up having a uh, basically pre-ignition or knock or detonation. Part of uh, getting extra fuel in there and being able to do that is uh, we're gonna have this Honda S300 V3. 
uh, computer. Basically, this is a stock Honda ECU with a uh, real-time Honda data daughter board kind of uh, soldered or socketed in there to where we could actually tune this thing real time. Uh, we have a set of Dietchworks 1200cc injectors. Um, and uh, basically we will be able to control and change all that stuff with the Hondata. Uh, one of the other things too is we have an upgraded map sensor. Uh, stock Honda map sensors can't really read that much over atmospheric pressure. I think you could probably actually get away with like seven pounds or five or seven pounds of boost on them. But we're gonna go ahead and upgrade that to a four bar, which this thing's probably never gonna see four bar boost unless uh, whoever wins this thing decides to do a fully build fully built motor on it and then actually turn it up pretty crazy. Um, uh, so talking about turning it up pretty crazy, one of the ways that you control how much power uh, a turbocharger makes is actually by your wastegate and controlling how much boost goes into the engine. So uh, this engine is 100% stock uh, internally. We should be able to get away with between eight and 10 pounds and make between 300, 350 horse. Uh, anything past that is just kind of pushing that uh, on the stock motor. But in order to do that, we need this wastegate right here. So this is a, uh, a Turbo Smart 45 mil. Uh, normally I'm a little bit of a tile guy, but uh, trying out the Turbo Smart for, uh, for this build. Uh, same flanges and everything, which, which works out really good with our manifold. But this has a five PSI spring in it. And so what this does is this goes on this side of the manifold right here. And there's a, basically a uh, five pound spring in there with a diaphragm. So you hook up the boost pressure to that. And as soon as it sees five pounds of boost, it basically pulls that spring back and it lets the exhaust bypass the turbo or basically control uh, how much exhaust is going into the turbo so that you're not over spooling or uh, sending all of the ex exhaust through the turbo, which means that you're gonna send all of the boost through the motor. So wastegate is 100% essential. No matter what, you always have to have wastegate. It seems like diesels get away with uh, without having wastegates. Some of them at least, but most of them do have them now. So uh, again, uh, I think that's about it. Other than we have a uh, an AEM wideband gauge right here. Uh, your stock narrow band O2 sensor in your vehicle uh, really doesn't do much other than when it's at idle uh, and it can't really take a huge swing in like the air fuel ratio. And since it is gonna be turbo, um, basically you're gonna want the air fuel, fuel ratio to swing pretty rich uh, when you're actually in boost and you want an accurate measurement and reading of that uh, to where you could actually control it. So we're actually gonna be tying in the the basically the O2 sensor signal from this into the Honda data so that way we can monitor everything and if stuff gets too lean or, or rich or whatever it should be able to control it and add a fuel cut to it um, I'm thinking that's about it also one other I guess key, crucial thing is uh, you could get away with a little bit on the stock fuel pumps probably a couple pounds but uh, we also have a uh, Dietchworks 300 uh, fuel pump and uh, so this is what I would consider, uh, you know, kind of the standard 255 upgrade, but it is a Dietchworks uh, 300. And uh, Dietchworks is a super awesome company. I've been working with them on a lot of my builds. And uh, if you guys have not checked out their website and some of their products, they have a ton of really, really cool stuff. You can see this is the, the DW module, or this is the X2 module that I basically have in the Mustang where I have two Dietchworks 400 fuel pumps. Uh, this is their fuel surge tank. Uh, that I have in the Civic and uh, if you guys have seen I mean we basically took the Mustang on drift week We took the Supra on drag week and uh, we've been beating the absolute crap out of my Civic all on uh, Dietchworks fuel systems regulators uh, I mean just basically they're absolutely everything that they can make for the fuel system That's uh, that we could put on here. We did so again huge shout out to Dietchworks If you guys have not had a chance to check out their website, they have a really cool year make model search you could actually go there and just see if they have something for your vehicle. And uh, pretty soon we're gonna be able to c carry the whole line of Dietchworks products on our website, Motion of Performance, which we're pretty stoked about. And we actually have some stuff on there right now. Yeah. And so if you wanna get entries into the giveaway, you could also buy stuff from motionofperformance.com. But uh, or email yeah. Us and or email, yeah. yeah so email chat. Something. Still adding a lot of products to, uh, to the website for that. But uh, yeah, I think we've been rambling on for about nine or so minutes. We're basically just gonna try to slap this thing together and not slap it together like too fast, but uh, we got a lot of things to, uh, to get started on. All right, so first step is uh, gonna be removing this uh, not stock exhaust manifold. So this is an aftermarket, I think it's like a, what is that? A two to three to one? 
Or is it a two to four? Yep, try why, yep. Try why, whatever you call it. So basically, the exhaust manifold is off. Like we said, we had this engine out of here yesterday. Uh, basically got everything installed and put back in. So uh, yeah, basically remove your factory header, your factory exhaust to get that stuff up out of the way. And now um, we were already kind of looking at a couple little things yesterday, but when we stick the turbo manifold up here, uh, basically puts everything in this area. And then, so what we're actually gonna do is drill the hole for the, to tap the oil pan and stuff right here. And we'll go ahead and kind of do a quick little mock-up of that to kind of show you guys uh, real quick. And then we're gonna pull the oil pan off, start drilling, uh, drilling the hole for the oil pan. And then we'll get that whole thing uh, basically resealed and ready to go. It is already turboed. No, so it, uh, this is, I'd say, one of the prettiest pieces of it, as I just, I love the Ram Horn B-Series look, uh, but we don't have the turbo completely uh, bolted on there just yet. So uh, we're just kind of working out what we're doing with the wastegate dump. So you can see it kind of goes 90, but that's where our downpipe is, and you can see we don't have that much area. So we might end up having to uh, actually pull the fan off of the radiator, because this is an OEM style fan, uh, and then get an aftermarket like slim fan. And that'll give us a little bit more room for the downpipe uh, versus trying to pie cut it and doing a bunch of crazy stuff, trying to do like a super, super tight radius right there, uh, just to kind of get it out of the way. So we'll, uh, we'll mess with that uh, a little bit. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start draining the oil out of the oil pan. And then we're gonna pull the oil pan and tap that because uh, basically the oil drain is gonna go like right in here. Making some decent progress, so I went ahead and I got the oil pan drilled, and uh, so we got that little fitting in there, kind of ready to go. Basically, as far to the top as I could get it, but we're still having enough to get the the actual hose in there. So, uh, Garrett's been messing with this downpipe real quick. Well, not really, real quick. It's <laughs> been uh, basically hammering on that this whole time, and it's turning out really nice. So, so you got some uh, little lobster cuts up there on the top. And uh, we got this guy going down right here. You want to kind of show the where that's going to shoot out. So that'll shoot out pretty close and tucked up to the oil pan. And then this actually shoots right here to this cat back exhaust, which that's three inch. So shoots out. Shoots out. You taking off? No. I got to tell Carson. Peace out. Peace out. Ty's Peace leaving out. us for the weekend. But uh, yeah, we're getting uh, making some progress. I think that downpipe is going to turn out really, really nice. Oh, yeah. So we like. Did the easy way on the oil pan with just the fitting with the with the O-rings, and we did the complicated route on the downpipe right. <laughs> by making the downpipe all uh, all crazy. So uh, yeah, he's gonna go ahead and start to kind of fi final welding that, and then I'm I guess it's time to start mocking up the compressor side and all the intercooler say, stuff yeah. too. Yeah, so yeah, while so you're welding cool. that, I'm gonna finalize this, get this thing all cleaned out, get all the metal shavings out of it, get that officially bolted down with some Loctite, and then. Uh, should be getting a little bit close. So we basically started on this thing at noon. It's 4.30 right now. So I think we're gonna have to come back in tomorrow and do another half day. So it's, it's how to install a turbo in two half days, not like a full day. I mean, if we would actually started on this thing at like eight or nine this morning, uh, but had some other stuff going on, didn't get down here quite, uh, and then we had to clean up the shop, get it all ready for the nice pretty shots of all that stuff. But uh, yeah, need to get back to work on this thing.
right guys, so running out of time today. So I've been going home at six o'clock at night and basically staying at home for the, for the night now that Jamie's had the baby, that's my new schedule. Uh, just help her out a little bit more and you know makes everything go go smoother for kind of everybody trying to get down here earlier so we got started on this thing at noon and it's basically six o'clock now Did a lot of stuff with uh, with the downpipe garrett over here has been uh doing some lobster cuts doing some other stuff getting her really nice welds on all that stuff so uh, a little nice fabrication look how smooth that thing is so he actually ended up pie cutting it in the bend instead of on the straights so you can see that almost the pie cuts themselves kind of have a little bit of a bend to them. Uh, so he's been doing a great job. If, uh, if you guys didn't know about Garrett, he's the guy who did the front, uh, basically mid plate or engine plate on uh, the Civic that ties the, basically the, the case up to the radiator support, as well as uh, the this whole firewall back here in the Civic. So uh, he's, a, uh, he's a great fabricator and has been helping me out the past couple of days just with this thing just kind of help bust it out and uh, help everything go smooth so that two people are doing stuff uh, instead of just me and running into one issue and then just getting held up on it for an hour or two. So um, as you can see, he's been messing with the downpipe for a little while. Uh, I went ahead, got all the oil pan stuff all figured out and was kind of doing some other stuff. Uh, oh, we also did have to switch to this fan right here. So Ty ran to uh, the parts store, grabbed that fan. So I need to get that wired in too. And uh, but yeah, turbo is up there. Uh, kind of where it needs to be and then we'll just have the little drain just come down right to here and uh, Looking good. So uh, we're basically gonna hopefully try to get this thing uh, put together in a half day tomorrow So that way it'll be like a one-day build thing um, But when you do get into kind of the more custom stuff as far as like doing a full custom downpipe uh, It does take a lot longer So if this was just like an off-the-shelf kit where you just had to, to drill the oil pan do that stuff and bolt on a downpipe and bolt on the exhaust we would honestly probably been done by now, but you know, little things pop up and uh, you go from there. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys, well, I guess, here in a second, tomorrow. Uh, is the next day back at the shop and I just kind of been messing with uh, getting this turbo on here and properly clocked so you can see it's uh, basically right exactly where it need to be so I went ahead and installed that little line there's no kinks or anything in it I actually really like this little piece right here just because a lot of times uh, if you have like sometimes you have an lines and stuff uh, sometimes if it's close to the exhaust housing it'll kind of burn it a little bit this is kind of like a little swivel thing and kind of extends it down out of the way and then you got this nice little rubber piece right here which uh, this I basically had a, a similar setup on my S14 for a while. It was on there for three, three and a half years in my drift car. I think it might even still be the same line setup on uh, on the, no, I think we changed it a little bit, but uh, anyhow, the same stuff right there, never had any issues with it leaking. Uh, so oil pan is, uh, is solid, ready to go. Turbo is pretty much clocked. I have it a little bit loose right now, but uh, this housing is basically finalized and everything is bolted on really tight. So uh, Garrett actually went ahead and welded up the the downpipe this morning at his house so i think he should be here shortly but uh after that uh we'll basically bolt on the downpipe finish welding the exhaust piece right here get the o2 bung and everything in it but uh, yeah turbo is finally mounted on there so now i'm actually going to go ahead and uh, grab the intercooler piping and start mocking up all that stuff and uh, and then we can move on to the injectors ecu wideband and all that other stuff So went ahead, got the intercooler mounted, all hooked up. So there's this little bracket kind of goes down, a little L goes to this bracket right here. It's also bolted right down here on the bottom, so nice and solid. Nice little thing that goes up right here and uh, goes through that uh, that hole that was already in there. I cleaned up this hole when uh, before we painted the bay because it actually already had one of these, already had that hole cut in there. I think it was for like a cold air intake or something a long time ago. But uh, 
yeah, intercooler pipe right here. Got the blow off valve hooked up. Uh, I actually took this thing apart and took out one of the springs. Uh, a lot of times on these type of blow off valves, uh, especially when you're running really low boost, uh, they don't blow off. Uh, so you have to take one of the springs out and then you could always add tension back to the top of it if it's too soft uh, with that little screw right there. Uh, so for the intake air temp sensor on here, there was uh, a cold air intake on here that I basically pulled out this little rubber bung or little rubber isolator thing and basically just pushed it through. So hopefully that holds. Um, hopefully it holds boost pressure. If not, we could always tie a little clamp around it and I'm sure somebody has to make some sort of like weld on IAT solution or whatever for like an OBD2 Honda. Um, so I might have to look that up. But uh, if we do end up going that route, we'll already have the hole and everything right where it needs to be. So intercooler piping is hooked up, all ready to go right here. It goes all the way around up there to the turbo. Got that all finalized. And then so Garrett came by with the with the downpipe. You can see nice cuts going back to a V-band right here. We have that other piece of exhaust right there. And then you just finished up welding uh, the wastegate dump tube. Uh, so that's basically just gonna go right here off of the side of this little turbo smart and just kind of dump straight down uh, So we won't be re we, we're not recirculating it on this one just because all the turbo Hondas need to you got to hear that wastegate That's part of the that's part of the experience. So uh, But yeah, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start mounting uh, fenders and stuff on this thing So it kind of looks more like a car um, And then I do need to wire in the injectors, but I mean essentially it's most of the systems are there now we have turbo we have the, the oil feed going to it uh, now we're gonna have the wastegate and the exhaust and once that's on basically all I have to do is get the injectors in it and then uh, load a uh, well plug in the Honda data load a base map and then put in the fuel pump and the injectors but and the wideband so all that stuff's going should be going pretty quick yep. so all right so got the wastegate down man that looks nice this can kind of flows down at the same angle as the exhaust right here and then, uh, so did something a little bit different. So we did a little bit shorter of a, uh, kind of a, an initial downpipe right here with the V-band right here. So let's say if you wanted to, you know, pull out the engine or do something like that, or just take off the turbo, you wouldn't actually have to disconnect the O2 sensor, which is pretty nice. And then we have the flex section basically just right here. And then that'll just go to the back section right here of the exhaust. So uh, yeah, that's turning out really good. Uh, most O2 sensors on the Honda is basically just straight up right here. That's kind of their factory. It's kind of their factory location anyhow But uh, yeah, it turned out really really nice. It's nice having Garrett over here Doing all the, the fancy fab work. It's, uh, it's definitely turning out really good and uh, Maybe a little bit better probably a little bit better than than what I would have done it So uh, so yeah, it's nice nice having him kind of focus on the, the fab stuff and I'm kind of buttoning up all the other little stuff around it and uh, I think, you know, total as a package, it's just coming together a lot better, so. So got the exhaust all finalized and on. Check that out. It's got full exhaust all the way to the back now. So full three inch. It's got a little resonator here and then a little can in the back. Not a little can, it's kind of a big can with a little silencer. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull that silencer out too. But uh, so now, basically everything up underneath the car is buttoned up. You need to throw on some radiator hoses and stuff like that. But uh, overall, she's looking pretty good and uh, super stoked on that exhaust. So. We're gonna go ahead, lower it down, throw some oil in it. We'll probably fire it up just on the stock ECU and injectors and stuff just to hear it and uh, see what she sounds like. Okay, right, guys, so got the fenders on this thing. Got some coolant in it. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, and fire it up. So this thing does have the silencer in it. Let's see. Let's see how she is. Now that's just not the quietest quietest Honda you've ever heard. I think so quiet. Alright, so we guys, we'll give you guys a quick little sample of it with uh, 
with this exhaust. Check this out, we got a plate garnish now. It's just so funny, just listening to that turbo. It's crazy that turbo costs more than the engine. <laughs> Seconds later. Sounds all smooth, smooth and like it's too OEM with uh, with yeah. a turbo on it. All right, so this thing definitely is gonna have an OEM pump in it, just based <laughs> upon how much dust there was on it. Oh yeah. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and clean that up a little bit, and then get to installing that Detworks 300. So I went ahead and installed the injectors. I found another set uh, of injectors with some new uh, new pigtails and stuff. So went ahead, got those all in, and uh, so I just went ahead and plugged in the Honda, uh, so I could do a quick little injector scaling real quick. So uh, scaled them up to the 1200 cc's, and then went ahead and put it to the stock map sensor, and I uh, checked this out. So, so she runs. So it's showing a uh, check engine light for an engine coolant temp sensor, but it's it's actually reading it on the dash. One air code. Water temperature. So I don't know. Maybe we'll clear that. I think you could clear them somewhere over here. But uh, yeah, so anyhow, instead of running it for a whole, uh, whole long time uh, with this, so as you can see, this car is basically the DX, so it has only the, the Speedo right here. And uh, so what I actually have, or what Nick included uh, for me, is uh, the SI cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and yank this cluster out, put in the SI cluster, which freaking looks really sick. And then I also have this right here, uh, which will go right there. And then we'll put the wideband uh, right here. Uh, it's a wideband boost gauge combination, so we might have to figure out another gauge over here. Maybe we'll do like an oil pressure or something so you can actually monitor that stuff. But uh, Or maybe put like a little motion on a smiley face or something right there. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and yank this out and throw that other cluster in. All right guys, so been messing with this thing for a while. I actually went home and, uh, and had dinner with the family and then came back down. Started doing a couple more things. So I grabbed a couple things from the auto parts store, like a headlight bulb. Uh, I got an air filter right here that actually goes on there because if you guys remember my last video with the yellow car, we, we probably should have had something on there. Uh, I actually ordered a turbo guard for that too. And uh, we got another turbo on the way, thanks to Garrett. So uh, big time, huge fan of Garrett and uh, all their turbos and I mean they just freaking sound so cool and they work good too so I uh, went ahead and put like 20 or 30 zip ties on all the little vacuum fittings and stuff so we have the line reference to the bottom of the wastegate and uh, again when you're when you're plumbing your turbo system and you're doing all that stuff or your friends doing their turbo system double check the vacuum lines and just make sure that it's plumbed to the bottom of the gate and that you have the top of the gate open unless you're doing like some advanced boost control type of stuff where you actually want to put a little bit of pressure on top of it uh, which at that point hopefully you you kind of you, you understand a little bit more but uh, got a p-clamp down here on the oil filter uh, going to the the turbo um, so that way if anything ever does happen to the motor you don't sh send a bunch of shrapnel into the ball bearings of the turbo um, what else? Uh, I hooked up the boost gauge on the inside. I hooked up the blow-off valve over there. Uh, bled the coolant again. I hooked up the fans. Got those all working properly. And then in the car, so I went ahead and uh, put that uh, AEM gauge right there. Found a, uh, a guy up underneath the dash in order to tap into some stuff. And then got the SI cluster in it. Uh, we also have the Honda hooked up over here. And I went ahead and I hooked up the some wiring. Uh, it's just kind of laying over there real quick. I'll, I'll get that all tied up nice. But uh, I hooked up the basically the analog output signal from the wideband to the the Honda. So the Honda actually knows the air fuel ratio, uh, and we could actually set up some protections and, some, and other stuff like that. And it, and it helps when you're actually data logging it. 
uh, to where you could actually scroll on the map and kind of do some auto-tune stuff. So, or at least that's how it works with the ECU Master. So I haven't played with uh, Hondata in a while. Uh, played with it a little bit uh, with the Sleeper Civic uh, after Brent got done tuning it. Um, I really didn't actually change anything. I was just set, trying to set up, trying to get the, the wideband to read correctly. And one of the things that I actually did in order to get it to read better on here was actually tie in the sensor ground uh, into the sensor ground of the ECU off of that analog. So there's an analog positive, which is the voltage out, and then the analog negative. So I hooked that into the sensor ground of the ECU, and it seems like it likes that. So uh, it's kind of doing some weird stuff right now. So I've been playing around with it for about 30 minutes on the computer, and I just can't seem to get it to not idle super, super rich. And honestly, I, I'm kind of scared now that maybe the Hondata is actually bad, which would kind of be a good thing because that means that my the Sleeper Civic is fine. Um, and maybe it's just the Hondata that, that is like corrupt or something like that. and uh, Or maybe it's the ECU. So, um, But anyhow, I've been kind of playing with it a little bit. I'll go ahead and fire it up for you guys. Show you guys the... Fires up like a spring chicken. Go ahead and hit the data logging right here. side of it and air fuel ratio is right there in the center uh, we have a check engine light for the coolant temp sensor um, so I actually have that basically wired to where that the uh, I have that wired so that the fans basically running all the time now I just over overrode that so uh, I want to take it for a quick little drive just to see if we do even try to roll into anything like not even like a pound of boost or anything um, that's what the sleeper civic was doing it would just as soon as we would try to do anything it would cut and do a bunch of weird stuff um so i mean maybe it is just the hondata in there and i've already been talking with uh with brent about kind of a, an appointment to tune with him on monday and uh, hopefully they have one up there but i'll confirm and talk with him but for now i'm going to actually move the mustang real quick and i want to take this thing for a ride even if we just get to hear the turbo and do all that type of stuff just so that we actually know we basically got this thing turboed in two days, so turned out really good. It's it's not uh, you know it, it's not that freaking high school turbo Honda type of thing. It actually looks pretty decent. Time new clutch turbo. Man, it's been a long, uh, long, basically two days. Uh, so again, we're gonna try to do this whole thing in uh, in one day. 
but I think we're just going to change it to uh, to two days. So how to turbo your Honda on a weekend, but it was actually weekdays, <laughs> something like that. But uh, yeah, that was basically just kind of the overview of uh, the process that we kind of went through to, uh, to actually get this thing turboed. I went ahead and threw on the bumper, did a quick little trim just right there on the bottom to, uh, to get it on there uh, and just kind of zip tied it on the edges real quick. So I need to kind of mess with fitting that a little bit. It still is touching the intercooler just a little bit. Um, but I just kind of wanted to get it on there so it actually looks more so like a car. So I really like the way that wing looks on there. Hopefully you guys do too. And uh, yeah, man, I'm tired. It was one in the morning. I didn't get here super, super early this morning. Yeah, got a lot of uh, a lot of really good progress on it. Uh, still need to hook up a little coolant overflow and stuff. I was just gonna get like an OEM style one on it. So uh, yeah, like I said, this thing's not, not show car, but uh, super clean, functional. And uh, honestly, when I drove it down the street and it hit basically like one pound of boost, air fuel was uh, was like 10.9, something like that. Um, I, I for sure think there's something wrong with the ECU. The ECU is just not happy at all with, uh, you know, with what it is. And, and like I said, there's basically doing the same exact thing uh, in the sleeper Civic with the D16. So I, I don't know what happened with, uh, with that ECU. Uh, something is obviously corrupt, but uh, we'll figure that out hopefully uh, hopefully before Monday, because that's when it's going on the dyno. Um, so yeah, I guess that's about it. It is officially turboed. It has fuel pump, injectors, complete turbo kit on it. It uh, runs and drives, it doesn't leak. Uh, and how many people could say that about, uh, about a turbo Honda? So again, the whole purpose of this giveaway is to kind of have something, you know, attainable, reasonable, something that you guys could build in your, you know, basically in your garage at home with your buddies in a couple days if you have the right parts and stuff. And it doesn't necessarily have to be super complicated or you know a 700 plus horsepower all wheel drive K series Civic to have fun. Um, seriously, this thing at 300 horsepower is gonna be an absolute blast. And uh, you know, the turbo sounds and just all the stuff and how clean it is. Hopefully it's gonna make somebody a, uh, a you know, something that, that they're really, really proud of and, uh, and stoked to show off. And that could be one of you guys, if you guys get entered to win this thing. Um, again, August 15th is, uh, is the last day to get entered. And uh, as, as, it, as of now, when you guys are hopefully seeing this video, Sunday is the last day for cash and orders, the cash and orders promotion that we're doing. So um, if you guys like this video, be sure to give, give it a thumbs up. If you guys like us doing the giveaways and stuff, uh, be sure to comment and, and let us know. Do you like the giveaways? Do you not like the giveaways? Would you rather, you know, us do giveaways but not do as much content on it, or do you guys actually like kind of seeing the whole process and seeing what we kind of go through on these uh, on these quick little builds? I always feel like, you know, the last week before the giveaway is kind of like uh, before the end of the giveaway is like uh, like the SEMA crunch. You know, is like just kind of getting everything finalized on it and kind of ready to go. So. Um, that's about it for rambling. This is probably a long video, but uh, if you guys watched it again, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll, guess, we'll see you guys in the next one, hopefully on the dyno.